Hey everyone, this is Crystal. I am so super excited to be joining another challenge. This challenge is the Halloween challenge and it is hosted by lovely Jubbly Furniture. Meg is an amazing furniture artist and she is hosting this challenge so all of us YouTube creators can come together and make something spooky and scary and I am super excited. I found this little dresser on Facebook Marketplace and I got it for $20. It's pretty beat up and banged up, it, but it certainly doesn't matter for the look I'm going for. Now, I am going to be doing something super different than what I normally do to kind of fit in with the theme of the challenge. So I want you guys to figure out if you can guess what I am doing. And it might there might be a certain point where you just know what I am going for and the theme I am looking for. But if you do, let me know down in the comments when you figure it out what my theme is for this piece. I did all of my usual prep work off camera because I didn't want to bore you guys with it. You know, the sanding and the cleaning and all of that. And I started out with my base color, which was called Caribbean Coral or Caribbean Coral. I don't know. You say tomato, I say tomato. So that is a paint couture brand. So once that was semi-dry, I didn't wait for it to completely dry because I wanted to blend and my yellow to kind of create more of like an orange tone. I am using a Rust-Oleum milk paint called Venetian Yellow. I like milk paint because it is kind of transparent, it's kind of translucent, so it is really awesome for layering as you can almost kind of see through the paint because it is so thin. I'm using two different brushes to kind of blend my colors in together and um, keep my brush strokes straight and smooth. Um, this is like a flat sort of brush. I don't even know, but they're both natural bristle brushes. That's hard to say. Natural bristle brushes. So I'm using natural bristle brushes. This even looks really pretty, doesn't it? It almost looks like a sunrise or something. I might have to try this again on another project. So my plan totally worked putting the yellow over top of the Caribbean coral to get that orange color. So I was super happy about that. And I just went and did this over the whole entire dresser. And um, before I moved on to my next step. I wanted to like grunge it up and dirty it up. And I have this uh, DIY paint. This is actually a mist tint from uh, Debbie's Design Diary. So you cannot get this color. But I'm basically brushing it on with a chip brush and spreading it out and blending and just kind of getting that dirty effect. Um, it's like a green color. So it almost looks like, I don't know, moss or something like that, algae. DIY paint is a clay-based paint, and I like it because it's really easy to blend. And if you like mess up or you want to reactivate it, you just spray some water on it, and it's easy as that to get the paint to move around and spread. So on this piece, I'm using several different brands as well as types of paint. I am using Paint Couture, which is an acrylic resin base paint. I am using Rust-Oleum Milk Paint, which is a milk paint. And I am using DIY Paint, which is a clay base paint. As well as I do come in and I add some other types of paints to it as well, which are just acrylic craft paints. 
But um, yeah, it, there's so many different types of paints out there and they all have their unique things that you can do with them. So if you haven't tried certain types of paint, it's so much fun to do new things and try them. So I'm using a metallic glaze now. And this is another great way to kind of go in and get that dingy, dirty effect. I'm just using my finger and an artist brush and I'm smearing it on and rubbing it on wherever I think maybe it might need some dirt or some decrepitness. So here is where all the scariness starts to come in. I am using just some regular acrylic craft paint and I am going to make it look like blood is dripping down the side of the dresser. I squeezed some of it out on some cardboard and I'm taking an artist brush and I loaded that baby up like really thick and I'm using water. I'm taking my paintbrush, dipping it in the water and then tapping it at the top of the dresser. The water mixes with the paint, makes the paint thinner and causes the drips similar to, um, yeah, like dripping blood. I left some of my red paint at the top, like really super thick and chunky, like coagulated blood or something like that. What I also did, and I didn't realize, I didn't record myself doing it, but I wanted a bloody handprint on the side of the dresser. So I just took my red acrylic paint, and once all my drip marks were dry, I painted my hands, and then I took my hand and I just slapped it on the side of the dresser and I kind of pulled downward so it looked like the handprint was bloody and it was like dragged across the side of the wall. So I didn't realize, I didn't record myself doing that. So I just wanted to take a second to explain how I did that. So here's where some of you might be able to guess my theme I chose for this dresser. I wrote the alphabet on the top of the dresser and I took my metallic glaze and I um, traced all of my letters with it. It was really thick. This took like several days for my, my glaze to dry completely because I did it so thick. And then I made like a string of lights below all of the letters. I used my Posca pen in a black and I outlined that. And then I wanted to make like um, different multicolored lights underneath of the letters. So I drew all of those out and then I just painted them in acrylic paints and other various paints and, you know, colors that would be on a string of multicolored lights. I took my red acrylic paint and then I just kind of dry brushed and blended on the dresser drawers, mainly focusing on the edges of them. All right, you guys, did you figure it out yet? I bet you did. So I am doing a transfer method that I have never tried before. Um, I did a test canvas and this is basically where you print out an image on your inkjet printer or whatever printer you have. And then you use a medium like Mod Podge, but I'm using a matte transparent medium type stuff that I had on hand. I'm taking it and I'm putting that on really super thick. And then I'm going to take that image that I printed out. I'm going to apply it on my medium. 
And then once everything is dry, it usually takes 24 hours before you can do this. You spray it down with some water and that ink is supposed to just stick to that Mod Podge or whatever medium that you put on there. And I was really excited to try this because I have never done this before and I've always wanted to try and I love trying new things. So I went ahead and did it on this piece. Put my image on there, I made sure I rubbed it down to get all the bubbles out and make sure it was flat and all that good stuff. Test canvas. I did not add enough of my uh, transparent gel medium, so it didn't work as good as I had hoped it to, but I knew what to do on this second try. So I'm glad I did my little test canvas. I knew more so how to make it work properly and adhere properly or however the stuff is supposed to work. I don't know. It's crazy. I was really excited at the results. And then, of course, once you get everything flat, make sure you wait your full 24 hours or overnight before you move on to the next step. So the next day with my mister bottle and my washcloth in hand to protect my DIY paint from getting reactivated, I sprayed my image and then I wiped up any wet drip marks and I took my finger and I just rubbed off all of the paper and lo and behold there it was my little image was transferred into that medium that I had put on there. Okay, so here it is. I'm sure you guys have guessed it by now, but if you have not guessed it yet, here is my theme for my Halloween challenge dresser. It is the Netflix TV series, Stranger Things. I ordered this poster off of Amazon and I have never decoupaged a poster before. I have decoupaged many things, but I have never worked with this type of paper, which is a poster paper. It's super thick and um, yeah, so this was something extremely new for me. I went and I measured all of my drawers because I needed to cut my poster paper to fit onto all of my drawers. I did all of this off camera, but I used my rotary cutter, my acrylic ruler, and my cutting mat, and I cut all of my pieces of poster po paper to fit onto my drawers. I'm using my clear transparent gel again as my medium to adhere my poster paper onto the dresser. And this is very similar to Mod Podge. So once I got done with my first drawer, I immediately realized a mistake that I had made. I did not put the gel on thick enough. So this was hard. I really, really struggled with this project. I have never done this before, like I had said, and I thought I did enough research, but this was really hard. This caused me a lot of trouble. I had assumed that I was going to put on my 
um, my clear transparent gel and it was just going to be movable and repositionable and I wasn't going to have a hard time doing all of that. But once it was on there, it was stuck on there and I had to peel off the poster paper to try and get the bubbles out and try to put on more of the um, media. Quite a bit of time trying to get out the bubbles and the wrinkles. Thankfully, I wasn't going for a perfect look. I kind of wanted a distressed um, sort of, you know, imperfect look anyways. So thankfully, that was a whole part of my aesthetic for this dresser. But this was hard. This was seriously hard, harder than I thought it would be. By the time I got to the fourth drawer, I got a lot better at doing my technique and um, I guess practicing on my first three drawers. I don't know. It was hard. It was a struggle. So if does anybody have any tips or tricks or pointers on how to apply poster paper onto furniture, I would really appreciate it. So um, for my drawer pulls, I got these off of Amazon. They are like some glass with red and bubbles and they look like blood and I took a 3M sanding sponge. I sanded the bottom part um, to just make it slightly abrasive and then I used a copper metallic acrylic paint and I painted the bottom. Debbie's DIY in a uh, big top to seal everything. I just used a paintbrush and I brushed it all. And that's pretty much it you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my spooky, scary, stranger things dresser. And I want to say thank you so much to Meg from Lovely Jubbly Furniture for hosting this awesome Halloween challenge. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to link her channel below. Make sure you check her out. I'm going to link the playlist below of all the other YouTube creators that are participating in this challenge. Check them out as well. There's some amazing, talented artists that are going to be joining. Thank you guys so much again. Make sure you like and subscribe. Happy Halloween and have a great day. Bye.